What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hackshot and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to do something a little bit different on Hackshot rides. We're going to do Hackshot drives as well. And I, I love cars as well and trucks and I have a lot of access to cars and trucks which is a great thing. So what I'd really like to know from you guys um, is this more content that you would like to see along with the motorcycle videos. I've been trying to work behind the scenes and get more access to newer bikes and different bikes and things like that because there's only so many videos I can do on my own bike. Um, I've done a couple of new reviews uh, but nothing like I want to do. Not the, uh, not the volume that I want to do. Um, so again, I'm still working on those things. We're still going to have motorcycle content but I'd love to incorporate trucks and things like that into this channel as well. I would love to hear what your opinion about that is. Let me know what you think. This is a video, this is a pretty pretty raw type of video. Me and my wife just discussing the truck, things we like, things we don't, and why I think this may be the best bang for your buck truck out on the road. Um, I say basic in this video a lot because this truck is pretty basic, but keep in mind the price tag that these trucks are, are at. Uh, so again, just a fair warning there. Let me know what you think about the uh, the Hegshot Drives part of the channel and if that's something you want to see more of. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. All right, what's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hegshot and thank you for joining us. Today on Hegshot Rides, we're doing a Hegshot Drives video. Um, I'm going to be reviewing my 16 Nissan Frontier and I kind of want to tell you why I think this is the best mid-sized truck uh, really out there if you're looking for something that's kind of budget friendly um, and that's going to be relatively low maintenance. Um, I'm just going to kind of tell you how I've enjoyed this truck up to this point, things I like, things I don't like, uh, and all of that kind of stuff. We'll get some of Miss Heckshot's opinion as well and uh, just show you around the truck. Uh, if you like what we do here, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like all that good stuff, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So yeah, this is a so yeah, this is a 2016 Nissan Frontier. I've put 42,000 miles, which seems kind of low, uh, but and, and it kind of is. But I've also put about 11,000 miles between the uh, motorcycles I've had over the same time period. So there's that. Uh, this one actually has the 4.0 liter V6, which is about 281 horsepower. They have a new motor out. I think it's the 3.8 that's producing over 300 horsepower, which is really great for this truck. Uh, aesthetically, it's been pretty much the same thing since 2005. And what really drew me to the Frontier initially uh, was the fact that I had an 01 Frontier with, you remember how many miles it was on that truck? 385,000 miles on that truck. I bought a used for 700 bucks, I got my money's worth, and that's when I ended up buying this one. It's the Desert Runner crew cab, all of that good stuff, which basically the Desert Runner, from, from what I understand, it's just on a four wheel drive frame. Of course, it is still two wheel drive. Uh, in the snow and ice, which I've driven one time in this vehicle because we had a, an amazing snowstorm here in South Carolina a few years back, this truck sucks in the snow. If you live somewhere where it snows, I wouldn't even consider it, especially with ice. Because this truck, the first time I went to go make a right-hand turn, I kept going straight. I realized very quickly <laughs> this truck is not the truck for that. But being in the wow. south, you generally don't have to worry about it. Yeah, brand new gas station. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, so, yeah. So, otherwise, the truck has some uh, little... It, of course, it has power windows. I have... Um, manual seats um, it has you know no remote start or nothing like that one thing you'll quickly notice show them kind of around the truck real quick Mrs. Heckshot while we're talking but one thing you'll notice is it is super basic basic instrumentation basic radio with a CD player all of that kind of stuff you can see you know all of my gauges here they're kind of cool they have the white background so this being a desert runner it does have some little upgrades and stuff uh but but nothing too crazy but yeah you can see my radio here no touch screen or anything like that it just is kind of kind of it is what it is of course it has bluetooth and all that kind of stuff although i will say the bluetooth in this truck is not great here's where the four-wheel drive knob would be if it had that traction control of course you have a little cubby here uh hazards all of that kind of stuff relatively the truck is held up pretty good uh, it's just kind of dirty right now of course I have my uh, my shifter right here in the uh, in the console uh, five-speed automatic transmission with overdrive I got a little console back here too nothing special just kind of open it up and it's a very 
um, utilitarian type of truck. Pretty dang basic, really. Um, you step up from here, and then you go into the, the, the Titan, of course. Now, when we bought this truck, my boys were a little bit younger, obviously. They were four years younger than what they are now. But it did not take long for me to realize that with four people in this truck, it is super duper cramped. Now, you may be thinking, well, maybe I'll get a Tacoma or something like that. You're going to want to reconsider that as well. I have a buddy who has a new body style Tacoma, and he has car seats on the back that are hidden up against his seat. It, it Even though the mid-sized trucks are much bigger than what they used to be, they are still not great if you have a family because you're going to run out of room super mm -hmm. quick. No vents in the back or anything like that. Really, no power outlets, no way for them to hook up USBs. Um, it Again, it's very basic. basic now, yeah. Now, yeah, so you've obviously driven this truck a little bit. What what is there anything you like or dislike or are you kind of indifferent about this? I you know with with my car I drive a RAV4 um so it's pretty low to the ground and the seats sit pretty low to the ground so when I get in this truck it's really high up way off the ground so it I like that I like having a wider um view the only thing I don't like is um No, I like that. The I really like the fact that the truck sounds like a bigger truck. I know I've always said that to you, but it kind of sounds like a really big truck. I do like that. The seats are really comfortable. It drives really well. It's hard for me to park and things like that. Like, my car is just so small and compact. I'm, I'm not used to, to that. Well, that's one thing, too. Even on this... This truck was twenty eight thousand, uh, brand new. I I got it down to twenty five. I had extended warranty and all that kind of stuff. So I, I you know out the door I think it was about twenty seven thousand. But even at that cost on this truck back then, uh, no backup camera, which is really really yeah, crazy. Sucks. You have to go up yeah. to the Pro Four X at least then to get the backup camera. Now the new truck that I'm going to be getting the, well I'll show you that uh, <laughs> whenever I actually get it but um that one has cameras all the way around so this truck being a 16 her 14 RAV4 even has a backup camera and listen Toyota isn't known for putting a ton of electronics in their vehicles Toyota and Nissan in my opinion are very similar in the way they approach vehicles where Chevy and other manufacturers are trying to stuff as many electronics in there trying to come up with the latest and greatest Toyota and Nissan for the most part I think they just kind of perfect what they have and they make sure they give you a very reliable source exactly like ford and this is something that you know i should have known ford selling a million trucks a year they've perfected that platform all this time now of course they don't have any more cars or anything like that they've pretty much just gone all to suvs and things like that but nissan has perfected this frontier man for a long time so it is a a, a super reliable but very basic truck yes now the new ones the new ones they actually have what's called their midnight edition so that's going to come of course all blacked out which is super popular to do right now and in my opinion looks very very good this one has those uh those deep uh almost gun metal rims that i think look very sharp on this truck and it's made it up with some decent sized tires but again uh this truck is not built for off-road it just kind of has more of a, a an upward stance than your normal SVs and SLs and all of that kind of stuff. It gives the look of an off-road truck. It really does. It, it does. sounds like it, but it's not. It's got a nice little tone on the inside, especially whenever you first start it up. Yeah. Kind of has that almost diesel kind of sound, but mm -hmm. again, it's a four liter uh, V6. All right, so on the outside of the truck, this is one of the, uh, one of the deterrents to the Frontier, in my opinion is the fact that this front end hasn't changed since 2005. It is still the same. And even for the brand new ones, same setup, okay? Same, now they may be using LEDs, I'm really not sure, but halogen bulbs, uh, this one does have the satin finish, so it's not chrome, so it's a little bit, little bit better there. Of course, I got the fog lights down below, but this aesthetically is not very pleasing. Now, I, when I bought it, I kinda liked it because it's very utilitarian type of look. Um, I would actually like it a little bit higher, to be honest with you. But if we just kind of walk around the truck, you really start to see the age of these things. Um, just in general, I just think they need to do a, a freshen up with these things for sure. Of course, we have the full four doors. Uh, power 
mirrors. There's no lane indicators. There's no, you know, anything like that. Of course, I have the uh, 17 inch wheels right there with the Dynapro hand cooks. And those have 40, those are the original tires. Still, still decent amount of tread, I think. And then I got one of the Bison Trifold tonneau covers. Not totally leak proof. Most tonneau covers are not. But I definitely prefer this over having a toolbox. And then coming around to the rear, of course, you have this uh, top cap for the uh, tailgate and, you know, all your badging and all of that good stuff there. So, pretty basic on the outside of the Desert Runner. I do like how it sits up a little bit from the normal SV and SL and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, it definitely has that four-wheel drive stance. Again, though, it's not four-wheel drive. Aesthetically, it's just a little bit dated. That's all there is to it. So here's my here's my instrumentation looking at the steering wheel of course I have my volume for my radio uh, push the talk uh, and of course I can hang up right there as well I don't ever use that button to be honest with you so mode this is gonna select me through my auxiliary see right there I can select through auxiliary I can do AM FM CD all Bluetooth all that good stuff and then of course I have my cruise control over here horn yeah all pretty basic of course this one does have the fog lights which is pretty great then here's my instrumentation here's my uh, my uh, driver's side window switch of course I have a lockout over here and then down here I actually have my mirror adjustment cargo lamp which that cargo lamp it, it does not do a whole lot I do have cup holders down here which is pretty good cup holders in pretty much every single door in this truck which is really nice and there's of course cup holders on the back of the center console so here's oh, what up I, here yeah so here's my overhead of course there's no uh there is no sunroof or anything like that but i do have my glass holder here here's the speaker for the push to talk and then i have my lights here dual visors no extensions or anything like that so uh you'll just have to deal with that and then here we are looking out the front of the vehicle here's my dash super small dash and again this is a mid-sized truck Here's my controls here, AC of course, max AC, all that good stuff, recirc and all of that. So, but, and for what you're getting and the, the value of these kind of trucks to get a truck like this under 30 grand, I think is, especially in today's time, that's pretty amazing on the used market. These things are going to go for even less. One great thing that I recently found out about this when I decided I was going to upgrade my truck, I bought this for 25 let's just not even count the warranty because that that's a that's an option so 25 and on a trade-in value they offered me 16 private party I could do 18 but in my opinion for two grand why would I go through the hassle of trying to sell it and you know you meet somebody and they're like oh well I'm yeah I'm not yeah I'm, I'm interested I might yeah I changed mm -hmm. my mind screw all that I'd rather just trade it in it's paid off thank God and that's sixteen thousand dollars uh, towards something that I actually want, which is pretty dang good. Power windows, all that good stuff. It's really super basic, but it is an awesome truck. If you have a full-size family, maybe if you just have one kid, it may actually be pretty good depending on how old they are. But really, when you have two kids or more and you have four people in this vehicle, we never take this it's thing out of town. Yeah, it's yeah. just too small. I have the tonneau cover on the back. It has a five and a half foot bed. Um, which can fit a decent amount of things in it. But again, this truck is really built for small can, guys. Yeah, yeah, small, small, very small people. My and son. The giant Schnauzer. We have the giant and, Schnauzer, and he, there's no way. Right. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of forgot about him. He's huge. <laughs> he's eight months old, and he he's is a, massive. He's massive. Um, my oldest son is. What, five, Almost four? tall of me. No, no, no. I'm five seven, five eight on a good day with good boots on. He's taller than me. He is taller than me. Yeah. So he is a big he's boy. Cramped. He's twelve, um, and he's super cramped. So hey, it is what it is, man. But if you want a basic utilitarian, you can go with the Pro Four X. But again, you're talking about thirty five thousand dollars for a Pro Four X. It's about ten thousand dollars more than what the Desert Runner was back then, for maybe your roof racks for four-wheel drive, backup camera, 
that's pretty much it. You're not going to get any more space for that $34,000. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's it, man. The 16 Frontier. I absolutely love this truck. I think for what it is, it's been great, but we've just kind of outgrown it. And, hey, that things like that happen. And hopefully I can help you. If you're looking at one of these trucks, maybe you're considering the midsize. Uh, does it have enough room and things like that? Hopefully we can help you out. If we did, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold the rubber side down.